Okay, before I start today's play emulator for PlayStation 2 setup guide, if you liked today's video, make sure to hit notifications, subscribe and like so you don't miss upcoming retro emulation content. It helps my channel a great deal, plus it gets you up to date retro emulation content as I release it. So we're looking at play today, and obviously play's been around a little while, but I don't think it's out there much. Of course, everyone talks about PCSX2, and it's a great emulator, and even the authors of play admit it's a better emulator later but the good thing about play is that it's absolutely bios free and it supports around 42 percent of the playstation 2 library so in the future in the near future this is going to get updated more and more just like it already is and it's getting better and better so i'm going to get you set up with this if we go over to the website just here what we're going to do is just download so in my case i'm going to be downloading the 64 bit now, if you're not sure which version to go for, which type of computer CPU you've got, all you need to do is go to your search bar in Windows and just type in system information. And under system type, you'll find what type of computer you're running. As we can see, I've got a 64-bit base PC or laptop, same thing. <laughs> so what we're going to do next is download it. So I'm going to download the 64-bit. Okay, and once you've downloaded the version which is going to be compatible with your computer, if we just scroll down a little bit, just near a source code, it recommends us to install C++ as well as DirectX. So if you don't have these installed on your computer, make sure these are installed, otherwise Play isn't going to work. Or if it does work, it's not going to be too great if you've not got those up to date. And another thing to check out is if we go to this web page just here, and I'm going to leave the links in my description. Uh, if we go to playable just here, like I just said a minute ago, around 42%, 41-42% of uh, the PlayStation 2 library is fully playable. If you just click on here, there's pages and pages and pages of uh, different games which are compatible. Now just make a note that you've got your codes just here which represent regions for your PlayStation 2 games. Now I'm going to test out a few different PlayStation 2 games today which actually match these regions and I'm going to just show you the type of performance which Play is going to give us. Um, and if we go back to the actual Play website just here and we go to About it also tells us that no BIOS is required, and that's one of the highlights with Play, is that it's a high-level emulator, but it needs no BIOS, and of course, PCSX2 does require BIOS, and you can read a bit further into the emulator itself. Like I say, they even admit at some point on their website that PCSX2 was pretty much superior, but like I say, I'm very optimistic about Play. I have slowly watched this one progress for what it is today. So we're going to actually install Play now. So if we just double left click on the Play setup, which we've downloaded. Do you want to allow this app from unknown publisher to make changes to your device? Just press yes if you should get this little pop up. And then what I'm going to do is just leave this checked where it says start menu shortcuts and press next. And the destination folder of this is going to go into our C drive and into the program files folder. And it's going to create another folder inside there called play. Now, if you want this to go elsewhere, just go to browse and then you can install this anywhere. But I'm going to leave this as the default destination folder. So C drive program files folder and it's going to create that play folder for us. So just press install on that and then close. Now you're going to find this creates no shortcut on the desktop, but we can easily access this. If we go to the C drive, and if we then go down the program files folder, you're going to find in here, play, and here it is. So let's make a shortcut. If I right click on that play.exe, show more options, then I'm going to go to send to desktop create shortcut, and that's just going to make it easier to access and here we go, here is our shortcut. Let's just delete that installation setup. Okie dokes. So I've got my shortcut just here and I've got a few games in my games folder here, which are apparently fully compatible with Play. So we got 007 Quantum of Solace, Capcom vs SNK2 and R-Type Final. So I'm gonna open up Play for the first time. Okay, so the first time you open up Play, you're going to find you've got lots of game titles and you're not going to be able to click on them because the games aren't there. This is just arcade games. 
So we're going to ignore those and what we're going to do is add our own games. So at the bottom left hand side, you're going to see an add games tab. If you left click on there, what I'm going to do is just navigate to where my PS2 games are and they're on my desktop and they're in my games folder. So just left click games, open and I can then select my game. So left click on 007, open. And you'll see at the bottom it says retrieving game titles. So bear with this a second. And there we go. Just by clicking on one of them, it's detected that whole folder. And here's our games complete with artwork, which play downloads itself. And you're also going to notice in your games library, there's little dots and the bright green dots represent fully playable. And then orange dots, red dots, not so playable. So next thing we're going to want to do is set up a controller. Uh, it's not going to automatically configure it for you. I've got an Xbox controller connected to my laptop for this. So to configure, I'm going to go to options. If I go down to controller manager, it's going to bring up controller manager and from here if i double left click on each one of these i can then start mapping out my controller so first of all i'm going to press on add and i'm going to type in the profile name i'm going to just call this just jamie and press ok and from here i can then start double left clicking on the buttons that i need which is going to be for my xbox controller so analog left and I'm going to use my analog stick on my Xbox controller and hold it for three seconds. And as we can see under binding value, it's now detected it and it's stored that into the program. And I'm going to go to right analog. And just continue this until your controller is completely set up. It's a little bit time consuming but it's not too bad now and obviously we want d-pad set up as well but just to remember it just does what it says hold the button your controller for three seconds it gives you a little countdown as you can see And obviously for PlayStation buttons like square, I'm using the X button. Uh, triangle, I'm using the Y button. Circle, I'm going to use the B button. Uh, cross, I'm going to be using the A button on the Xbox controller. Now L3 on the PlayStation 2 controller is the analog stick pressed down. And that's it so once you've done that just hit on apply and okay and that's it so briefly i'm going to just show you some video settings if we go to options settings if we go down to video you're going to find resolution just here now i find on particular games i've tested with this the image begins to wobble and it's pretty laggy so i suggest to begin with starting with one times and then gradually working your way up and just find that sweet spot and of course level ends potato computers aren't going to work too well with this so just be mindful of that but i'm going to start with 480 and under presentation mode we can fill the screen or go to original size now i'm going to select original size to try and get that playstation 2 experience and we've also got option here to resize output to widescreen 16 by 9. Now, just remember that most PlayStation 2 games, if not 99% of the library, was for 4 by 3 aspect ratio. And so if we stretch it to 16 by 9, your games are going to look too stretched and not going to look right. And under GS Handler, this is where we can use our video backend. So by default, when you start this for the first time, it's going to be on OpenGL. And under Vulkan device, you should see your CPU. So what I'm going to do 
is actually select OpenGL and leave this as all standards right now. And I'm going to go to clone. So I'm going to open up my first game to test this out. And I'm going to choose R type final. So you can either double left click on your games or just right click and left click on boot. Screen, I just double left click. So as you can see, that's lagging a hell of a lot. Now this game is supposedly playable. So what I'm gonna do is go to video and I'm gonna change some settings here. So I'm gonna to go to enable GS RAM reads. And I've also changed my GS handler to Vulcan and I've selected my RTX graphics cards. So what I'm gonna do is also pop this on four times uh, 920p and we're gonna try this again. So close. And I'm going to go back to video and just pop this back down to 480. So that's the lowest resolution. So it's not taking too much out of my GPU and CPU. So lagging a lot, considering I put resolution to 480. And I've also enabled GS RAM reads. It's pretty bad, to be honest. I'm going to try Vulcan device and put this back onto my CPU. At least uh, that game is pretty much playable. Frame rate is pretty bad. So I'm going to open up play again. And we're going to check out another game, which is apparently compatible. And this one I'm going to try out is going to be Quantum of Solace. So I'm going to go to options again for this, settings, video, and I'm going to make sure everything is at the lowest. Um, I'm obviously going to leave my RTX cards and Vulcan there, just so it gives it a bit of extra power. And for this, I'm going to start this off by disabling Enable GS RAM Reads. And what I'm going to do then is just right click on 007. And obviously this is still very laggy, so I'm going to attempt to enable GS RAM reads again for this. Hello? Mr. White? Yes? 
particularly laggy uh, so what I'm gonna do is just go to presentation mode and try something like original size again on this <laughs> And as we can see, by putting that to original size, it's not actually that bad, so... <laughs> so at this point, the emulator just closes down. We're going to go back to play again, and I'm going to open up my final game with this, which is Capcom vs SNK. As you can see, I played three games just there, and not one of them was particularly playable. Uh, at some points, really fast frame rates went up to around 100 at one point, but when you actually get into the gameplay, that's when it starts dipping to minus 20. So it's definitely an emulator worth checking out for in the near future. Uh, the thing which has confused me is by the compatibility list I've checked, uh, those three particular games are actually marked as playable, but as you can see from that footage there, uh, anything but playable. Uh, but like I said, not to criticise the developers behind Play, it's a very capable emulator and it needs a lot more work on it, but of course, emulation and designing emulators is a very complex business, so uh, my hat's off to developers behind Play. Play. Anyways, so if you liked today's video, um, hit notification, subscribe and like so you don't miss upcoming retro emulation content. Also join me on social media, I'm on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter and TikTok. And for more PlayStation 2, PCSX2 setup guides, do check out my console emulation playlist and you'll find several different uh, PCSX2 guides in there. But anyways, until next time, stay retro. Oh, 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 oh,